In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the frosted glass scarf or the multicolored scarf. It's the same thing. Let's begin right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to do the multicolored scarf or I'm calling it the frosted glass scarf because when you change a few things you can make this scarf look pretty cool and you can either have multiple colors like it shows in the main pattern or you can do a variegated yarn just like so and the variegated makes it look like frosted glass if you're using blue of course. Today's color choices today are Peyton's Canadiana. This is called Little Boy. Uh, it's the little boy variegated just like so and this is a Peyton's Canadiana Navy. So you can switch it off your colors to uh, depending on what you want. The pattern is calling for a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's begin right now. So let's begin to examine this pattern. What we're going to be doing is that we are going to, I'm just gonna chain up a little bit and I'm gonna share the multiples with you in just a moment that you can change the length of your scarf. So we're gonna go the whole length and you'll notice that the model is wearing it just like this. So we're gonna do the whole length as we go and what happens is that we're going to create our first main border just like so before we get into the doing the color splashes like you see and then the main border is on the other side. Today's tutorial, once I get you to this area here. It's very very straightforward, very easy to follow and then after that when you're done this part then we just go on the very edges and then we just single crochet along the bottom back and forth back and forth to equal basically the the width that you see of the borders on the side. So it's really quite simple. And so in the instructions it calls for us to do a chaining of 260. That is the entire length of the scarf that you see. The scarf is about 76 inches long and if you want to change that you want to make it longer or shorter the magic answer is the multiple of three. So if you continue to uh, go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three all the way to the end just add two extra chains when you finish that and then that will keep your pattern in balance. So let's begin. So let's start our slip knot like we normally would and let's put our hook in and start. So remember what I just said, it's multiples of three so no matter what you do, you can either do your 260 if you wanna match what you're seeing in the pattern but if you wanna change it, it's in threes. So remember that the one on the hook never counts as one. So it's one, two, three. I'm gonna do it this way instead. One, two, three, one, two, three and then one, two, three and you're gonna continue to do that till you get the length that you want. At the end of the chain if you're doing it this way you have to add an extra two. So one and two. So do that and let's begin. So if you're doing one, uh, 260 I'll meet you back in just a few moments and if you're ready to begin let's start now. Beginning row number one we have to go to the second chain from the hook. So count back one and two and then just insert into the second chain and single crochet and you are going to single crochet along the entire chain that you have. So I always like to go on the back uh, hump of the stitch itself. It makes for a nice cleaner edge especially when it's going to be exposed. It is the final edge too of your project so they're not gonna be adding anything to it. If you go in the back it's just one strand on top like so. So please uh, row number one single crochet all the way across. So you come right to the end and turn your work and let's begin row number two, three, four and five. Obviously we can't do all those at the same time so it's all the same and all we just need to do is chain one first and then single crochet into the first one and then just single crochet across. So this would be row number two. I need you to do this row. So row number two, three, four and five exactly the way I just showed you. So they are just simply single crocheting across and just write it down on your piece of paper so you don't lose count. Remember that the pattern is free and available for you to be able to print it out and make notes on that as well. So please do this for rows number two, three, four and five. When we come back we're going to start playing with something slightly different. So off camera I just finished this and here is the thick border. So this is rows two, three, four and five and now we're ready to begin to play with the fun stuff. But we're not quite ready to change the color yet. So when we come back we're gonna be on row number six and we wanna leave this color on before we start changing colors and really having some fun with color play. So let's uh, begin row number six. Let's turn our work first. Let's begin row number six and we're going to simply start by chaining up one and single crocheting into the very first one. 
Now we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And we wanna miss two single crochets down here on the, the row and go to the third one and single crochet in. This is exactly what we're gonna do all the way across. So chain three, one, two, three, miss the next two, go into the third for a single crochet and you wanna do this all the way. So obviously your scarf is gonna be a lot longer. So it'll take you a little bit to get all the way down. Uh, but just continue to do this and if your counts are proper when you get to the very end just like so you're going to one, two, three and the last one will be in to the final. If you're off by one just make it work just force it to go over. Um, I wouldn't frog any of your work if something has gone wrong in your pattern. So what you're going to have is that you'll have these nice loops that are left and now we're gonna start doing some color stuff. So let's uh, begin and we are going to um, change our color and to do that this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you only once in this tutorial. So we're just gonna trim our yarn and I want you to pull that yarn through. This is how I would do it. Pull it through like so. And I want you to just take this yarn and just weave it through a few of these strands that are there. I always like going from the this side over. So I'm just gonna weave it in and what's gonna happen is in the next row anything that you're putting in this particular stitch here is going to trap that from being able to fall out and you can't see it anyway. So you're going to have to do this every time you're working with this blue you're gonna have to continue to trim your yarn and hide it in every time you go to start. Once you have it completely in you can just trim your work and let's begin. Remember that now that you see it like this we make sure that you do start on the right side. So you make sure that uh, this is where we finished so this is where I'm going to start. Let's begin the next color. I'm going to start off with the slip knot and it's just my way of securing it into position and I ins wanna insert my hook and grab my project up. So I want to insert it into the first single crochet there. Okay. I know it's darker yarn for you to just see that but that's where you gotta go. So single crochet in and I take both of the strands and I wrap it over and I pull it through just to secure it as a slip stitch. So now what we're going to do is according to the instructions it says that we're gonna chain three. So I take the straggler just one more time pulling it through. So that's one, two and three and therefore I can safely trim this straggler afterward without having to do much work to it. So I, it says to miss the first a single crochet which is the stitch and where we were just at. So we wanna miss that completely and put in three double crochets right into this chain two space. Okay, so one, two and three. If I could just do it right. <laughs> so then once you have that three in you just skip to the next chain two space and put another three double crochets and you do that all the way across. See? Just very simple. It's an optical illusion on how hard this looks. So it's just three again next one three double crochets in and you do that all the way across your scarf. Notice the colors are starting to change with my variegated and I have my last one in here so there's three double crochets in just like that and then finally uh, the very last one the last single crochet I wanna put in a double crochet. Now unfortunately because of the way the pattern is, is appearing is that you cannot carry this yarn up to the next time you have to use it. The problem is. So the thing about this particular stitch is that you have to finish off your yarn in here. So you have to trim this yarn now and, and finish it and we're gonna reintroduce it but I wanna keep an eye on this string here because I wanna reintroduce it back to exactly where it is. So I'm just gonna finish it off and just weave in my ends. Okay, into the next one just like so. So the reason why you have to finish it and you cannot carry it in this particular instance is that this yarn the next time you need it you will be over here. So therefore if your end is over here you've gotta drag it all the way across and it's just not possible. So we're, what we're gonna do is that I've just weaved that in. I'm gonna turn it. We're gonna move up to row number um, row number eight and so we're gonna start. So then this is gonna take our blue all the way across and then we have to start the variegated again but because it was over here when we finished is that you have to trim it every, each and every time. And so that's the, that's the only thing that I would say that would be a deal breaker in this whole thing but the end look is so amazing so why, why not do it right the first time. So let's begin to work on the navy for the next row for number eight. 
Let's begin the next row, uh, row number eight and we're just gonna simply just start off with a slip knot. Again, I prefer that method because it just makes it um, just extra secure for me. This is where I kind of finished. I have my weaved in edge so I know where I'm done so I don't ever get confused. I insert into the first double crochet. I'm gonna wrap both the straggler and the yarn, the, the, the yarn leading to the ball. Pull it through, it's a slip stitch. And what I want to do is that I want to chain one and single crochet into the same stitch that I was just at. I wanna trap the straggler underneath as well just one last time to make sure that I really get it in there. And we're going to do exactly kind of what we did already down here. The problem is, is that, not really the problem, is that this time we're gonna play within the gap spaces that you see in between these groups. And basically when we did it before we had to count stitches. Now you just have to physically look for them. So now we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And we're going to miss the first group of three and just put in a single crochet right in between the two groups of three. Okay, so one, two, and three, just like that. Miss the next group of three and just put it in for a single crochet. So whenever you're doing this particular row, it's very quick and easy going all the way across. Lots of chains, a few stitches, nothing major. So when you come out to the very end, so one, two, three, the very end on the other side, you're just going to single crochet into the last double crochet that you find and then just trim off your yarn and we're gonna begin the variegated one more time. So let's uh, just trim that off. Again, just weaving in the ends just to make it count. And again, if I just go in the chain a little bit, I can actually really hide that in because the next variegated kind of goes right over top of it. Turn and work, let's get our variegated in. So I grab where I left off, create a slip knot to start and basically I come in to the single crochet that I started with over here. Okay, this was where I finished, so it's the first single crochet. Let's attach the yarn in and I wanna chain three and I'm gonna grab the straggler and the yarn leading to the ball for number one and then two, three. So again, exactly what you've done underneath, so it's just three double crochet, one, two, and three. Okay, and what I wanna do is I wanna just move to the next chain three space. Just like this. And put in three double crochet. And then once I get that in, just keep going down the row. So just three double crochets into each chain three space. Okay. So in the very end one, you're gonna put in your three double crochets as normal. And then the very end stitch, the single crochet is gonna be one double crochet and you're gonna finish this off and weave in the ends. So you're going to do a total of these particular ones. Let me just get rid of that because it makes it easier to see for you. So what's gonna happen at the very end of this the scarf is that there's actually nine rows of these colors that are going in. So if you follow it directly like the pattern, um, there will be nine of these little boxes. So one, two. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where you are on the project. So what I want to do is that I wanna move up to the next part of this to create the border on the other side. So in order to do the border on the other side, we have to always finish off with these blue. Okay, so no matter what you do, even if you wanna make it smaller, instead of doing nine, you could do um, eight of these boxes instead, but you always have to finish putting the final blue in and let's do that next. So as per the instructions, it says um, you need to finish with the eighth row of the pattern and the eighth row of the pattern is these blue right here. So let's uh, just turn our work, let's grab our blue just like you see here and let's repeat that one more time. This is the final before we lead into the border on the other side of the scarf. So again, just like we did before, let's insert into the top of the first double crochet and I put both around just as a, as a slip stitch through chain one and single crochet back into that same one. And then we simply just chain three. One, two and three coming in between the spaces and then one, two, three coming into these spaces. 
one, two, and three. And then one, two, and three. And what you want to do on the very end is that you just want to single crochet into the last double crochet. Just like that. Okay. So now we're gonna keep our blue on and we're gonna move, start moving up to the next row as in the pattern. So let's begin and we're gonna establish the border on the other side now. So let's turn our work and we're going to begin the neck, the border on this side. So how we do that is that we're just going to chain one and one single crochet into the beginning single crochet and each one of these chain two spaces we're now gonna start filling them in and there's gonna be two single crochets into that space there and then there's going to be one single crochet into the single crochet. So we're now starting to thicken it up. So okay so this chain two, chain three space here we're only gonna put two single crochet in and then a single crochet into the next single crochet. So do that all the way across. So two single crochets into the gap space there and then single crochet into the chain, uh, single crochet. Keep going all the way across and then remember you have to put in one single crochet into the final when you get over there. Keep your blue on and we're now ready to move on to the next rounds or next rows. Okay let's turn our work and now the next four rows are gonna be identical and it's just like we did in the very beginning. So we're just gonna chain one and one single crochet into each one of them each one of the stitches going all the way across and you need to do this for a total of four rows. So this is one of four. Just grab a piece of paper just write down the number of rows that you're doing and just check them off as you complete them. Um, my sample is really quite small so it's easy to remember but when you get a long scarf and you got people bothering you at the same time it's not always easy to remember so please write it down and uh, you, will, you shouldn't be able to go wrong. So once you get to the end you just single crochet last one, turn your work and chain up one and then one single crochet again. So continue this and you need a total of four rows just like this and then I'm gonna show you how to do the end pieces right at the very bottom of your scarf. So I'm just finishing up the final row on this side of the scarf and I wanna fasten off. Now before I do that what I wanna do is that you can fold one scarf over the other just to double check to make sure that the borders are the same width. So if you're not sure just fold it over and you can actually just physically check. So let's uh, fasten this off and now we're going to do the end pieces which are the bottom of the model's um, outfit. Um, it's hanging all the way down and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna complete and make this border look like it's going all the way around but in actual fact we're just going back and forth on the end. So let's grab our, our yarn again and let's uh, begin. So let's grab our navy and all we're just going to do it says to evenly space 32 single crochets along. Well because this is a different width you just have to match and get it as close as possible but whatever you do this side you should be able to do to the other. Let's come into the very corner stitch Let's just grab our yarn and fasten it on. Okay, so I'm just fastening it on and chain one and do a single crochet into the same stitch. So because you've done single crochet into um, into the borders, each one of these rows equals a single crochet on its own. So those are pretty straightforward. So you just continue to go across the side of the stitches because each row equals a single crochet in this direction. So now this is also a single crochet. We remember that. And so the equaling space here is what we have. So I would recommend putting two single crochets into around the double post and then one into the next single. Okay, so then here's another uh, post. So put two around there and then here's a single so then that's a single there and then you're back on the rows again. So um, you can just continually match the sides. So if you're just consistent you can make your scarf look really consistent without blowing a lot of brain cells. So once you get all the way across simply just turn your work and you just wanna repeat four, uh, three more times just going back and forth again. So chain one, a single crochet into each stitch going back and forth and do that for a total of three times. Total yeah, total of three times. So you should be able to fold it over and just kind of measure it out to make sure that it looks like the same thickness. If it's too thick pull out a row and if it's too thin just add in an extra row. You just want it to make it look balanced. Pretty simple right? So I really like the whole concept of the the whole uh, window frame kind of look. 
is really quite neat. So I guess that's it for now. Enjoy this pattern. It's really quite neat. You can play along with the ideas of color. Um, you can have a really fabulous scarf and it's a nice generous length too. I find a lot of scarves are too short but I find this one is just the perfect um, length if you were to do it just like the pattern suggests. Until next. So I guess that's it for now. On behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarn Inspiration, stay tuned for more ideas and free patterns coming up real soon. We'll see you later.